Warm greetings to everyone. My name is Sang Yongdi. 20 MSP 0046 is my registration number. I'm a PG student pursuing MSc in Physics at Valor Institute of Technology. And currently I'm in the third semester of MSc. Now with this brief introduction about myself, I would like to welcome all the viewers to my today's video presentation on the topic magnetocaloric materials. These magnetocaloric materials are basically magnetic materials which exhibits or shows an important property or a phenomenon called magnetocaloric effects. Now to start with, let us first look at the lesson outlines of my today's video presentation. So by the end of this presentation, the viewers must be able to define and explain what is magnetocaloric effect. And in the second, the viewers should also be able to explain the application of magnetocaloric effect. And in my discussion, I'll be restricting myself in discussing the role of gadolinium oxides, which is also another type of magnetic material. In general, magnetic materials are a major component used in the energy application. In general, magnetic materials are a major component used in different fields of application, including energy application. And due to continuous research in this field, new classes of magnetic materials such as manganite and cobaltite are being discovered that have led to new properties such as superconductivity, magneto resistance, and magnetocaloric effect. Now, identifying these properties help in better understanding the origins of magnetic transitions and to develop new materials for multifunctional applications. Therefore, magnetocaloric effect is basically a heating effect or is a cooling of a magnetic material when the applied magnetic field changes. So basically, when the magnetic field is applied, the magnetic materials get heated up. And when the field is removed, then the materials get cooled. So that phenomenon was actually for the first time was observed by Professor Werbock in 1881 in iron, which is a magnetic material. So therefore, magnetocaloric effect is an intrinsic property of magnetic materials. And this effect is due to the coupling of a magnetic field with the magnetic sublattice. Therefore, magnetocaloric effect is characterized by the isothermal entropy change and adiabatic temperature change. So these two parameters are very important parameters associated with magnetocaloric effect. Now there are three components or three ways or three methods by which actually we can evaluate the magnetocaloric effect. So number one, by direct measurements of adiabatic temperature change, so we can actually evaluate to what extent the material is exhibiting the magnetocaloric effect. And second, magnetization measurements from which actually the change in temperature through adiabatic process is calculated using Maxwell relation and also by measuring the heat capacity in the cases of zero and non-zero magnetic fields, we can also actually evaluate the extent of the magnetocaloric effect being exhibited or being shown by the material. So these are the three methods by which actually we can evaluate the magnetocaloric effect shown by materials. Now, let us look at the application of magnetocaloric effect. Now, so far we have discussed what is magnetocaloric effect basically. 
Now here, we are going to discuss what are the application of magnetocaloric effect. And of course, there are many applications of it, but then for our discussion, so I'll be discussing about the application of magnetocaloric effect in magnetic refrigeration. So this magnetic refrigeration is a modern cooling technology system. Magnetic refrigeration technology has many advantages. So how it is superior over the traditional method. So why it is considered as a better than the traditional one. So these are the reasons. Number one, now as the name suggests, in the magnetic refrigeration, we make use of magnetic mattress. So due to the use of magnetic mattress as refrigerants, it is an environmental friendly refrigeration technology, which in other words, it does not produce any harmful gases or greenhouse gases, or for that matter, any other gases which actually pollutes environment. Therefore, it is environmental friendly refrigeration technology system. Then magnetic materials also have a higher magnetic entropy. So here, since we are using magnetic materials, so these magnetic materials which are used in the, in the design of magnetic refrigeration system will have higher magnetic entropy. So this magnetic entropy is also a very important property or parameter associated with the magnetic caloric effect. Then magnetocaloric effect may be supplied by electromagnets, superconductors, or permanent magnets, which do not need high rotational speeds, mechanical vibrations, noise, low stability, or short life spans to be functionally operated. Then one of the most important reasons why magnetic refrigeration system is better than the traditional refrigeration system is the efficiency of the modern day magnetic refrigeration system. So here its efficiency is 30 to 60% of the Carnot cycle. Whereas in the conventional or traditional refrigeration system, its efficiency is only five to 10%. So therefore, magnetic refrigeration system is much, much more superior than that of the traditional refrigeration system. Now, as I said, for our discussion on this magnetocaloric effects, so I'll be discussing with respect to gadolinium oxides. Now, firstly, this gadolinium, which is also called as the rare earth metal, of course, it's a lanthanide series, is one of the most important and powerful elements. And its wide range of application is further enhanced by gadolinium oxide nanoparticles. Now, since Gadolinium oxides being the rare earth metal. So due to presence of the 4F orbital electron, therefore it is much better than other rare earth metal oxides. There is gadolinium oxide shows high thermal stability, high direct band gap energy and thermal stability. So these are the special features of gadolinium oxides. So because of the presence of these properties in gadolinium oxides, which otherwise are absent in other metal oxides, it shows or gives maximum magnetocaloric effect at room temperature. Therefore, this gadolinium oxide becomes a very highly qualified and suitable candidate to be used are designing the magnetic refrigeration system. So this is the modern day application of gadolinium oxides. Thus, 
gadolinium oxides can be called as magnetocaloric materials. And a good magnetocaloric material bears the quality of having high values of magnetic entropy change and relative cooling power. So thus, we can say that magnetocaloric effect is the basic phenomenon behind the magnetic refrigeration system. Now here, I would like to discuss how anisotropic magnetocaloric entropy is changing with respect to temperature. Now here, as you can see on the graph, the graph is plotted for parallel and perpendicular orientations of the magnetocaloric materials with respect to temperature. Now, in general, with the increasing magnetic field, the magnetic entropy decreases and heat is transferred from the magnetic system to the environment in an isothermal process. Whereas, on the contrary, with the decreasing field, the magnetic entropy increases and heat is absorbed from the lattice system to the magnetic system in an aerobatic process. Now, as you can see in the graph, temperature decreases, the temperature decreases the change in entropy, which actually increases and it will rapidly increase beyond 50 Kelvin. So this value is also increased by increasing magnetic field up to seven Tesla from five Tesla. So large anisotropy in magnetocaloric effect is observed in between the orientations and it increases with higher magnetic field change. So due to stress, surface effects or shape magnetic nanoparticles shows strong uniaxial anisotropy. So for today, I would like to stop here and we shall continue our discussion on the same topic in our next video lesson. So these are some of the references that I referred while preparing this PowerPoint presentation for my, for my video presentation. And I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to Professor Dr. Sindhu Pandi from the School of Advanced Sciences, BIT, for his constant motivation, support, and guidance. So thank you, sir. And I would like to also thank all the viewers for watching my video and see you all in next video presentation. Thank you.